पांडे सर आप अपने आप को अनम्यूट कीजिए सर आप आप सुन पा रहे हैं सर हाँ जी 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 सर ओके सर डॉक्टर ए के श्रीवास्तव जी 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 सर नमस्ते सर जी नमस्ते गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून सर हाँ सर बाकी लोग कनेक्ट हो जाए फिर फॉर्मली शुरू करते हैं ओके ओके
So, welcome to the fourth technical session of ICFM 20. In this technical session, we will have a plenary talk by Dr. Neera Shukla from NIT Patna, followed by three invited talks uh, from different speakers. And uh, to chair this session, I would like to invite Professor B.K. Pandey, sir, who is head of Department of Physics and Material Science, Madan Mohan Malviya University of Technology, Gorakhpur. So I would request Professor B.K. Pandey, sir, to conduct this session. Thank you, Dr. E. K. Shivasu, sir. It's my privilege that I am here to chair the fourth technical session of International Conference of Unfuturistic Material 2020. And in the this particular session, this technical session, plenary talk is by Dr. Neeraj Shukla from the NIT Patna, Bihar, and who is going to have its deliberation on the micro nano fabrication using the focused iron beam. I think this particular lecture will be uh, very much useful for the audience who are joining us in this technical session. I welcome Dr. Neeraj Shukla, sir, for his deliberation. Sir, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone can listen to me. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present this work. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Yes, please share. Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. I hope it is all right. So I'm going to enter into full screen mode. Yes. And uh, my time starts now. Okay, so I hope I have uh, 30 minutes, I guess 25 minutes followed by question and answer. So as proposed, I'll be talking about this uh, micro nano fabrication by focused iron beam. Okay. And uh, so this topic, let me, this is the logo of IIT Kanpur, which we made using focused iron beam and the length scale you can see is uh, two micrometer. And uh, so this will be like uh, how micro nano fabrication is achieved using focused iron beam. So the outline of my talk would be that uh, I'll be discussing first this uh, iron matter interaction and uh, briefly I'll discuss about focused iron beam. Okay, it's a specifications, modes of FIB operations. In short, it is known as FIB. And uh, the other part is the 3D sculpting by FIB and overhanging structures, okay? And uh, it has various applications, okay? And uh, you can make temperature sensor, you can make uh, pressure sensor, you can make autogram mass sensor, you can make use it, this device as a template for photonic and surface plasmonic applications, okay? And then I'll discuss some brief limitations and conclusions. One, uh, the most uh, important uh, aspect of this, um, uh, focused iron beam is that it is used by semiconductor industry, okay, uh, on a big way, okay. What I'll be discussing will be mostly like uh, how it does what it does, okay. But mostly what semiconductor industry does that it uses it for failure analysis, okay. And it uses one of the modes of FIB operation that is like uh, deposition of uh, metals, okay, in, in the specified regions. Okay, so like suppose you have uh, some uh, mobile circuitry or some uh, MEMS and NEMS devices. MEMS and NEMS, uh, most of you will be familiar, but I'll spell out the name once again, that uh, micro electro electrical electromechanical systems, okay? Micro and nano electromechanical systems, okay? So like, uh, so, so these uh, devices, they have a very small circuitry and if there is any failure of that circuit because of the breakage of the internal connections, okay? So those connections can be healed using FIB, okay? By depositing metallic structures. So you can also get to know because whenever you have a, I mean, a stream of iron beam, okay? That constitutes a current. So if there is a breakage in the circuitry that uh, you can also figure out where is the gap and you can fill that gap so that in one way it is known as the failure analysis which semiconductor industry the fab labs okay the most uh, commonly known as 
fab lab and uh, so that fabrication lab laboratories all over the world they use it a lot so i'll be <clears throat> so moving forward so iron beam has like various uh, uh, i mean uh, components which can be achieved using iron beam it can be used for analysis it can be used for engineering the materials okay so like analysis part it can be utilized for rutherford back scattering analysis which we known as know as rbs other thing is channeling we can also use it for pixi uh, proton and heavy ion induced x ray emission okay and uh, that basically tells you the trace amount of elements even in a very small quantity of materials okay and uh, then there is a resonant scattering experiments and this uh, elastic recoil detection analysis okay this uh, then ion beam induced charge microscopy and engineering aspects which people utilize a lot is ion implantation in making p type n type okay that is the one use and uh, there are, i mean various implanters 100 kb 200 kb their only job is to implant a certain kind of uh, uh, group 5 or group 3 element okay depending on what you require okay then it can be also used for nano tribology okay like uh, making this uh, you can make the structures rough you can change tune the surface energy you can also do ion beam mixing at the interface you can do ion beam epitaxy you can do lithography okay like proton beam lithography okay uh, like we know the uv lithography uv visible lithography x ray lithography but this one is proton beam lithography and uh, there is a deposition by cracking of molecules under ion impact that is the fib and what we'll be focusing is the underline by micro nano machining and fabrication of micro components which is the topic of today okay i'll be discussing uh, i mean the details the finer details and uh, at the end of the lecture uh, audience may ask uh, I mean, if anything they require and uh, how the shape and size is controlled and i mean sculpting and there are other uh, radiation by standard effects okay and uh, there are, it has applications in uh, biological samples as well okay let me go ahead okay so when iron interacts with matter okay as i told you that the many things happen and uh, so is um, sputtering also takes place secondary electrons are also ejected okay and uh, then there is a uh, photons x rays are also emitted from the target okay so all you require is a proper detector to detect certain things okay so but for the purpose of for the purpose of uh, ion beam analysis okay or the for the purpose of uh, micro and nano fabrication among all these effects okay the effect uh, which is more prominent is the sputtering okay sputtering and also so that sputtering basically is responsible for top to uh, bottom approach but suppose you want to uh, grow layer by layer then there is another effect that ion beam energy is utilized and i will explain that as we proceed further okay so material under and be processing so people ask like uh, there is a very uh, i mean i'm talking about fabrication that how uh, i mean there is a physical limit to fabrication that uh, to what extent you can make the structures small okay and uh, of course like uh, you cannot image that using optical means okay so because of the diffraction limit so people use scanning electron microscopy then we will uh, have gone resorted to transmission electron microscopy then stm then afm okay all those things but that is for the imaging sake but how do you like uh, how do you make the structures smaller and smaller okay like the uh, these uh, laptops computers motherboard they keep on improving okay with i3 technology i5 technology i7 technology and the number of transistors per square inch they keep on improving but the how do you make uh, our like uh, structure with certainty okay there should not be uncertainty some of the uncertainties i have discussed in the past okay that is known as really really instability like a water droplet cannot remain intact if you like uh, uh, just see a water droplet put a cloth around the tap you will find a very fine uh, like a uh, stream of water and as it goes down you will see that that breaks into small small droplets similar if phenomena is also shown by the nano structures and that phenomena 
I mean, uh, it bears the same name and that we know as the Rayleigh instability, okay? The structures cannot remain straight, okay? Because with whatever tools you are going to touch them, that imparts enough energy and that basically melts those structures, okay? So making it smaller is not a problem, but handling that, I mean, uh, smaller structure, it is like, uh, I mean, uh, everyone knows about the interference due to single photon, single electron, okay, what it, I mean, how, if you go to observe, okay, you don't see the uh, interference. Uh, I mean, if you observe which whole electron went through, then your interference pattern will be destroyed. So if you know that electron is delocalized, then only you, uh, but you cannot know which whole electron went through. Uh, if you know, then your pattern will be lost, okay? So in a similar way, okay, I can just draw that analogy over here. So, so the smallest drill bit, okay? Like how do we make uh, machining, okay? Uh, in a macro world, we use like uh, drill bits, okay? So the single ion, okay, is the smallest drill bit, okay? That is the idea. So we can use it for top to bottom and bottom to top approaches. And uh, this is a very standard curve that tells you the energy loss. And so which range we will be using, okay? That uh, that is uh, that basically this curve tells you. So this tells you that that ion energy versus en uh, energy loss of the impinging ion. Okay. So this uh, this curve, this uh, by the orange curve S n uh, written. Okay. So that is the stopping power uh, of the ions when it loses its energy to the nucleus, and this S e that is the stopping power when uh, impinging ion loses its energy to the electron. So initially, you can see at lower energies. Nuclear energy loss is more dominant. Okay, that it that the projectile loses whole its energy to the nucleus. Okay, and when energies uh, of the ion is very very large. Okay, and that is basically comparable to the uh, velocity of the uh, electrons uh, orbiting around the uh, nucleus. Then uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, I mean the impinging ion loses its energy to the electrons. So idea is that if you have to uh, make uh, implantation, then you have to be in the high energy zone. Okay. And when you have to basically uh, so that, and because this guy, uh, the lower energy ions does not have much of a range into the materials. Okay. So they will, uh, I mean, do uh, this uh, nuclear energy loss at the surface. And that is what exactly you want for ion to do something on the surface, okay? Because if they do something at deep inside the material, that that damage may not, uh, I mean, come to the surface, okay? Uh, not There's no question of may not, it, it doesn't come to the surface, okay? So whatever damage you create, that is buried deep down the material, I mean, the surface. So if you wanna uh, do something on the surface, your energy has to be of the order of uh, the exact numbers of few kilo, few tens of kilovolts. Okay, so this curve uh, tell, lets you choose that how would you uh, mark your energy. Okay, so basically you want a sputtering on the surface, and that sputtering uh, is possible at the low energy. At higher energy, it does only Rutherford backscattering and uh, many other stuff which I mentioned, the pixie and uh, this um, various phenomena I, I, I mentioned over here. Okay, that. Uh, that is done using uh, implantation also is achieved by, with uh, using medium, okay, mid like 100, 200 kV, but that does not uh, sputter off the surface. This curve specifies, this is also very important uh, factor, okay, in uh, knowing about the, uh, this is sputtering yield versus angle. Sputtering yield is defined as like a number of atoms sputtered from the target per incident ion, okay? Like, uh, so if the number is two, uh, sputtering yield is two, that means like uh, each ion removes two atoms from a particular, so that depends on the target and the impinging ion, its energy, of course. And uh, also it does on, uh, so at a given energy, it also depends on the angle, angle at which ion is, I mean, uh, uh, incident on the surface. All right, so like suppose the ion is incident at, uh, you can see angle versus sputtering yield, and you can see as angle is increased, the sputtering yield at same energy, okay, like 10 kV, 20 kV, 30 kV gallium ion, okay, and uh, that energy that increases, okay, the sputtering yield increases with respect to the uh, incident angle, and that is understandably so, because at oblique angle, the it sees the more uh, surface atoms, okay, on its way, okay, that is why, 
more atoms are ejected and their sputtering yield is high and if it is like almost raising angle again it will come down uh, because it will not have any impact on the surface atoms will just touch graze on the surface and uh, uh, it will like uh, move on and it will not have any impact so the angle like uh, 60 70 degree 80 degree angles are uh, very good for removing more more atoms from the surface so low energy and oblique incidence gives you better results but uh, i mean that is the if you want to increase the y and more more atoms you want to increase so focus on ambient induced processes so depending on the ion energy the following interactions could happen we can do deposition what we know as the basically uh, layer by layer so basically this is like a bottom to top approach and this is sputtering so this is basically uh uh sputtering means like uh, top to uh, bottom approach and you can do uh, the ion beam they also do redeposition due to scattering effects okay that i'll not be describing because those are some very basic uh, uh structures i can just give you a br brief glimpse if i'll get time and it can do implantation it can do back scattering okay and uh, there is a detector which does basically back scattering spectroscopy okay uh that is we known as bse mostly uh, sem imaging is done by secondary electrons and you can also do back scattered uh, electrons okay in sem so that is a mode and uh, ions are also back scattered okay so not all effects are completely separable okay and this may lead to unwanted side effects okay for a specific application like uh, uh, redeposition is one of such side effects okay so uh so what 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 we do we have, there are three uh, more basic modes which we try one is for emission of secondary ions and electrons which i said this is used for if i be imaging low ion current and if i be milling which i just discussed this uh, sputtering of substrate atoms and then chemical interactions gas assisted this is more important that deposition so gas assisted that how we deposit bottom to layer by layer atoms okay uh and we you can also do enhanced etching of certain materials which cannot be etched okay like certain metals they are uh, not very easy to dislodge okay where atoms are very like uh, tightly bounded and you cannot easily dislodge them so you use chemical means okay uh, so that you know as a uh, we use basically xenon fluoride and iodine gases you, you put a layer of those uh, chemical etchant on the surface and then you if you bombard so with the help of the energy of the ion beam and you get enough uh, chemical interactions and that way those uh, layers are etched out okay so just to give you a glimpse of these three basic modes just a uh, schematic okay so one is like uh, imaging modes so ion beam is uh, i mean um, electron and ion beam that both can be used for imaging okay second electrons are uh, ejected from the surface when uh, beam is rastered on the surface then you basically you have a ever heard thonle detector that is known as etd and uh, that uh, there are various detectors so i'm just quoting one of the detectors which is used more prominently and uh, so what what it does it basically uh, detects these electrons and you have a topographical image and you you can do uh, i mean if you increase the energy suitably and uh, use only ions electron does not do milling okay because they are much lighter and uh, they cannot impart enough momentum and energy okay to achieve this sputtering so you you use them and then you you use it for the milling okay nano scale fib milling and the third one which is uh, more important which we know is nano scale fib cvd okay chemical vapor deposition so what it does you have a gas nozzle which sprays the uh, certain uh, precursor gas okay and when wherever uh, scanning of fib is in your hand okay so wherever you scan only those regions will be Uh, uh i mean decomposed okay and these uh, these are organometallic precursor gases so the, the, these gas nozzles there are various gas nozzles i will show you the imaging of the inside of the chamber of fib so if you want to uh, deposit platinum so you have a certain uh, uh i mean gas organometallic gas uh, composition uh, so the, for uh, platinum you have a different bottle for tungsten you have a different uh, gas nozzle okay so let me show you so this is just a video of fib working there are various uh, octopole lenses which basically focuses the beam okay so and this is the gas nozzle so, and there are ion beam and then you have electron beam okay that basically images okay so there are two columns one is electron column one is ion column ion column whatever you do you'd like to see what you have done okay so the, this uh, left side is electron column right side is ion column and this is uh, one of the gas nozzle this is this is just uh, animation of the phenomena i'll now come quickly to the some of the nanostructures fabricated by focused ion beam 
and uh, this is the five e stage maneuverability for three d structure fabrication that you can uh, tilt the stage to achieve these structures okay in the three dimensional structures okay and uh, the beam can also like uh, scan in a, in a specific manner so you it can you can rotate it up to 52 degree okay and i mean various companies make different different kind of models okay and uh, here like the iron which we use uh, for focused iron beam application is gallium iron okay and uh, gallium has amazing uh, properties nowadays people use helium iron okay that we, uh, people call that uh, helium iron microscope the, because helium is lighter they use both for um, uh, this uh, imaging as well as uh, sputtering but the sputtering yield of heavier iron because gallium is heavier is more and th that way gallium will be more effective in terms of uh, making uh, micro nano structures okay so this is the inside of the chamber okay this is the iron column i hope you can see my cursor and uh, the top one and this side one this is the uh, ion electron column this is the sample stage because i have we have taken it out of the chamber and these needles are basically the precursor gas there are five needles okay provided uh, in the setup okay and you can deposit gold you can deposit tungsten you can deposit platinum you can deposit silicon dioxide you can deposit uh, you can have a gas basically gas assisted itching of the certain um, materials which are very uh, tough to machine like uh, like a steel and other materials so and they, they, these are the detectors okay there is x-ray detector there is a secondary electron detector okay so this chamber basically comes under the these iron columns and then it does what it does there are some of the examples of fib milling prowess okay this, this is the just uh, you can see the length scale to micrometer and uh, this if effort was from um, one of the our uh, lab mates to make a inter digital electrode okay and for a biological application for DNA separation, okay, from BSB department, okay. And there are some micro grooves which were made by FIB milling, okay. And whatever shape you design, uh, it can do, uh, I mean, do the milling in the similar fashion. In, and you can see this is the top view, this, uh, this image. And the right side, this is basically the image from at some angle, okay. So you can see the top view, you can see the, because you can tilt these stays, you have the maneuverability of uh, tilting the stage up to 52 degree, you can rotate the stage up 360. So there are five axis movement, X, Y, Z, rotation, tilting, and that is all done by piezoelectric sensors to the, uh, basically to the resolution of few tens of nanometers, okay. It is such a precise instrument. And uh, so moving on to the next part. This is the range I was talking about, 30 kV gallium in silicon. It goes up to, let's say 270, uh, angstrom like um, and uh, this uh, 2 MeV proton in uh, silicon that goes up to 45 micrometers. So you can see that uh, the uh, uh, range plays very uh, I mean important role. And because this uh, remains near the surface, th these low energy uh, they are responsible for the removing the material from the surface. Okay, and because they go so deep, whatever they create the damage nuclear damage at the end of the range, but that collision cascade may not reach to the surface. So for the implantation sake. For other purposes, you want to modify the, you want to tune the properties or electrical properties. Let's say you want to tune magnetic properties. I talked about that also, uh, that uh, how can we uh, I mean, induce magnetic defect? Okay, that is uh, not the topic of today, but uh, that is uh, where we use higher energy. Okay, so, so basically you have a recipe that what you want to do and then you have to carefully choose the ion beam energy. And then uh, the other important aspect is what will be the beam current. Okay. Uh, you cannot like flood the chamber with the too many ions so there also you have to take some precaution then we can make overhanging structures okay so you can deposit one layer then on top of that another layer okay so this is just a schematic to show you that uh, how did we do that and uh, so you can see now this is the dumbbells which we uh, created by lower layer by layer materials and this is the schematic the d part basically uh, represents the small small diskettes Okay, and we made it, and uh, I, I mean, we made iron beam go in those fashion. And when we made the pa the pattern, you could see the spring. Okay, just one pitch. We have, uh, I mean, uh, one by one. So you can see overhanging structures also layer by layer. Uh, one can deposit. Okay, and uh, so th that the same process has been replicated. D 
uh, the D is the schematic of what we gave to the machine. To so the, the, there are various modes of it, that FIB works. Okay, you can make a bitmap file, you can program, you can write a C C program code, and you can ask the beam to go into a particular fashion. Okay, and uh, for uh, it is just simply like a CRO. There is an X and Y plate, and uh, you can make a Lissajous pattern. Okay, depending on the uh, signals you give on X and Y patterns. Okay, so you can make the beam go in the desired fashion. Okay. And the uh, various modes, as I suggested, to achieve the goals. Okay. Uh, I, again, I said that this is the one pitch uh, spring. Okay, overhanging structure. This is the just I joined over here. Another turn, and this is just uh, you can see a structure. Okay. Dr. Somebody. Dr. Sukla, sir. Dr. Yeah, Sukla, I think. Uh, yeah, your, I have. Your, your talk is very nice, really. But uh, please, uh, uh, due to the. I'll conclude. Time. I'll I'll conclude by showing some results because initially I was yes. telling you about some basic details because. Thank you. Thank you. Usually, uh, so I'll finish uh, wrap up in five minutes. Okay, you. sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm already keep, keeping track of time. So it is 23 minutes 30 seconds is the timer. So I'll conclude. Okay. Thank you. So these are some overhanging structures. This is a nano pirani gauge as a pressure sensor we can make. And this is that uh, you can make a, I mean, the stage can move 52 degree. We made uh, another uh, change into a stub that we milled at 45 degree aluminum. So now 45 plus 52, you have basically, uh, I mean, almost 90 degree, more than 90 degree uh, I mean tilting of this. So now, if you paste your sample over here, you can access the regions which you otherwise cannot access. Okay. So like this portion, I can mill, and uh, we can make a cantilever. I mean, this is the actual structure which we made. So now I'll show you all the structures. Like this, we made a wall, and then the inner region we milled. Okay, using that a stub. This is a, again nano cantilever, and we put a load. Okay, the third image, and uh, using that, the bending of a cantilever. We the the BSC first year that is taught okay that you can calculate the Young's modulus by bending a beam okay so we could uh, measure the bending okay post uh, I mean loading and uh, I mean uh, before uh, loading the what are the changes in the uh, cantilever uh, I mean depression and that measuring by measuring that depression and dimensions are known uh, one can calculate and infer what are the Young's modulus and that was done and reported. These are some of the things you can see like uh, micro channels can be made and some uh, roofs can be made, okay? This one is just to, to show some of this stuff, okay? Uh, people have done. And uh, this one was done uh, by another MTech student which uh, they made a AFM cantilever tip using tungsten, okay? So this is, uh, the tip is 50 nanometer and the images which were measured using that cantilever tip was on the right side. You can use it as a nano manipulator, okay? And uh, you can use make a micro rotor. The length scale is one micrometer, and uh, you can machine it very finely, okay? The various images tells you that you can make uh, various kind of tips. And as I told you, that you can make a template for photonic and surface plasmonic applications. So you can make ion beam induced adhesion, okay? Of uh, gold and silver films, and you can make various patterns. I'll quickly show you that what is meaning by adhesion. The, this pattern shows you the gold is everywhere and you have made some pattern, okay? This will be basically FCC pattern and uh, face centered cubic, okay? And uh, this is basically 50% uh, area is milled. So that will be exactly like a chess board. And uh, right hand side, if you see, this was by using a simple scotch tape, the adhesion of gold on glass is very poor, okay? All the metals on these uh, non-conductors, okay? Uh, is uh, very poor, so you can simply use a scotch tape and hold the film will come off. Okay, until uh, unless you do something, you treat the surface before depositing something. So that is uh, one aspect that you, whatever devices you try to make on, that will not be sturdy. Okay, that will uh, fail. So by using this iron beam, uh, what I had done, shown you that uh, using micro nano patterns. Okay, and uh, I improve the adhesion using iron beam. So iron beam can improve the adhesion in the regions you want. And when I did a scotch tape, right side you can see. The rest, gold has been completely removed except the regions which has been treated by iron beam. So the milling was also done by iron beam. The uh, structures are also made by iron beam. 
and uh, so this paper was published in uh, two papers the effect the this was published in nimbi the, the phenomena and the this paper was published in prb that was basically using its uh, uh, other applications okay like the extraordinary transmission that i'm not talking about that in detail i'm just telling about the prowess of fib uh, micro nano fabrication you can make two dimensional holes of various kinds okay like 2d this is simple cubic hole this is a uh, simple cubic hole with 50% and 25% uh, milling area this is a hexagonal close pack uh, array okay this is for surface plasmonic application left side basically tells you the transmission and that is the left uh, it is like completely uh, calibrated so this uh, this 30% uh, up to 10 to 30% transmission and some in other uh, wavelength regions you have up to 60% transmission okay and that is uh, mind you these are sub wavelength holes they are not supposed to uh, transmit light as per classical bethe aperture theory okay because the i mean diffraction limit will not allow you these are basically sub wavelength holes 200 nanometer holes so light cannot go through them so even getting 60% is known as the extraordinary transmission these peaks are in itself extraordinary so i'll quickly wrap up there are some sensors i made temperature sensors using a fib platinum tungsten we can deposit this is the junction and uh, this uh, the upper wire you flow a current if it will it will heat up it will sense and this is the curve which that voltage applied to the micro heater so the top wire 55 micrometer this is the wire on which we pass a current and this platinum tungsten so you can also we have to calculate the cb coefficient and that was published in applied surface science and uh, there are some of the bending of the cantilever I ju i'll just show you that this is the cantilever before a uh, loading and this is after loading you can clearly see the bending of this uh, thing and you can calculate the young's modulus and that was uh, uh, very i mean this is 4.8 10.3 pascal and this is some uh, dynamic measurement that you can use it as a autogram mass sensor that you can make a pillar and you can vibrate it okay and uh, if you remove some mass the change the frequency will change and delta f will translate into delta m and that will be autogram mass sensor that was uh, published also in a very good journal and uh, that you can use the pillar vibration to measure the sense so this is a dynamic measurement not a static measurement so i hope i will uh, leave it here okay uh, there, there are some heating effects just that ion beam bends the uh, nano wires okay you, you can see that this is a video and uh, that uh, so ion beam basically does heating this is a proof that uh, uh, and we have done i mean we have actually measured the uh, current using a fib made sensors and how this piece wise bending can be achieved using fib so i'll conclude that okay these are some temperature theory portions which we did this is extensive exhaustive work and uh, it cannot be covered in uh, half an hour but i have tried to convey something so i think i'll thank once again for uh, patiently listening to me and uh, thank for your attention thank you dr sukla sir although your uh, lecture was very nice and it was uh, very good for the application point of view and how it was started from very basic to the iron matter interaction and it's very useful thank you very much for your nice lecture thank and you if audience have any question then please uh, you may have the question although in the chat box something they are writing when then if anybody ask question then please welcome so i think uh, there is no question sir only mm -hmm. due to the limitation of time no and, issues uh, I, I i think that uh, some more lecture is needed for your deliberation so that our uh, participants will be more beneficiary hmm. so thank my, you my, my my email address is, is there and uh, if people can ask me and write to me later as yes, well. okay thank you once again sir thank, thank you. you very much sir now next invited lecture is uh, in this fourth technical session of this international conference on futuristic material is by dr ak e. mishra who is from upes dehradun uttarakhand and title of his uh, uh, discussion his lecture is the material materials for energy environment and medical application dft modeling and simulation i think uh, dr ak e. mishra is here uh, thank you very much uh, professor pandey sir and uh, am, I, am i audible sir yes sir you are audible please share your yes. screen
I think I already shared it. Okay, let me. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is it visible now, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. So thank you very much, Professor Pandey, sir, and uh, Dr. Uh, Amit Sivastav, sir, for uh, giving me opportunity to project my work. <clears throat> so I will be discussing on different applications uh, where we can use the modeling and simulations to predict materials, to investigate more about materials, or I will say, tailor design the materials for various applications. So this is uh, uh, my university where I'm working at the Radon, UPES. We have applications of traditional modeling and simulation in uh, all the fields, actually. Not only in science and engineering, but uh, in the drug designing, in the transportation business, and others, which I haven't discussed, uh, I haven't covered here in this slide. What we do, we have to uh, start with some uh, initial performance, actually, uh, like you have, and uh, we have some target at the end. So what we'll do, we will do some material discovery, and we will measure some particular property specific uh, for particular design. So you have to address the size and the date. And uh, here the uh, role of uh, modeling is similar comes where we can uh, actually tune the specific parameters in the material uh, so that uh, you can have a better uh, properties. So we are actually working on the rational design of materials. These are the different applications in which my group is working here at uh, Dehradun. Uh, we are working on the CO2 conversion to fuels. Uh, we are working on designing, uh, designing new battery materials, water purification, and uh, uh, we are working also on metal oxides based gas sensors and photoelectric materials. So the theory on which I'm working on is based on a quantum mechanics where we specifically focus on the uh, atomic and molecular level. One of the uh, application uh, where our group is working is designing novel catalyst for CO2 conversion to fuels. So even um, you can see in this uh, screen that uh, in May 2020, it was uh, highest uh, concentration of the CO2 available in the environment. And the news on the right side says that uh, even uh, during the lockdown, it was uh, not went to a very low level. So it's still uh, yeah. So it's a great challenge. And uh, where we are working on is it's a three-step process. You have to capture. You have to then once you have captured the CO two, the uh, we are here actually. I, uh, and the challenge is here that uh, extraction and conversion, conversion requires so much of cost. So if we have to uh, pay some money up, out of our pocket to convert CO2 into fuels, nobody's going to work on that. And here our challenge comes that can we design the cheap catalyst? So uh, we started with different thought that copper is one of the metal that can produce so many uh, hydrocarbon fuels from the electrode reduction of carbon dioxide. But it suffers from a few problems. So we looked at the oxidized copper and oxidized copper was even better. Then we compared and what we found that even copper oxide is even better than copper uh, oxidized copper. So we are looking at the materials and these are the, uh, the computational results that I'm showing you. We worked on the different surfaces that experimentalist can have and uh, when it's going to synthesize. And uh, our results show that 111 is the most dominant phase in this uh, CU2 morphology, which is uh, supported by actually the wave function uh, calculations and the surface energies. So it can have different surfaces as well, as you can see 001, 111, zero surfaces, but mainly the one, one, one surfaces. So then we looked at the, the other processing we uh, allowed the carbon dioxide molecule to uh, interact with the this surface. And this published, this we published in uh, General Physical Chemistry C, 
we did uh, uh, other calculations as well to identify how much is the charge transferring, how much is the uh, phonon modes are changing to quantify the whether these materials are capable of activating the CO2 or not. Uh, one of the challenge, um, this is the experimental results actually from one of my colleagues. What we did, they did the drift analysis. They looked at the, uh, they started with the CuO, which is a uh, copper two oxide, and they bombarded the hydrogen gas or the chamber. And uh, after some time, what they found that uh, CO2 was forming. And after some time, CO, uh, it was reducing into pure copper. And uh, this was the salmon pink color source that they found the format over this. So this was a puzzle actually at the uh, at the experimental hand, but they were not able to identify what's happening and why we are getting the format here. This uh, finally we published in the ACS Catalyst in 2016 with the help of simulations. So what I did, I I looked at the uh, pure CuO surfaces, I did the hydrogen, and what I found that uh, as soon as the hydrogen comes in the contact with this uh, surface, uh, this surface reduces into uh, CO2 and then finally after some time it, uh, uh, when you put more and more hydrogen it will convert into copper. How does it happen? Uh, the hydrogen molecule takes one oxygen out of it on the top of surface of uh, CuO and from the water molecule and once you have CO2O you have actually the format which I have not shown the results uh, like this yeah so you have a uh, 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 CO2 and hydrogen and it will go to different uh, uh, transition states and you will be having formic acid within no time. Uh, this is again just to show you that we were, um, uh, inspired from our calculations, uh, our colleagues at uh, University College London uh, synthesized and characterized and they found exactly the same distance between the different planes at the one 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 surfaces that what we found in our simulations. We stipulated with the uh, NTNU Norway and uh, we worked on the maxines. Maxines are really emerging materials and they are finding application in every field of our life as you can see in the energy in the environment. Uh, so um, this paper uh, just a uh, quick sub, uh, way to summarize what we found. We, we worked on the defected maxine and our results say that if you have defects available, you can store more CO2. So more CO2 and the better activation. So once the CO2 is activated heavily, uh, you, you need not to uh, pay more energy to convert. I'm sorry. Yeah, so you need not to convert it, you need not to pay more energy to convert it to something to fuels. Uh, this is uh, uh, our work on 2D materials for electronics applications. This was uh, work started with the Professor C. N. Rao at uh, GNCSR Bangalore, where I was a DST young scientist from 2010 to 13. So, as you can see, you have a uh, you have a carbon here which is a graphene seat and boron nitride is also having the same structure as of a, a graphene so it's also 2d materials but it's an insulator so what we thought can we mix these two materials and if we can mix it uh, we can have a, a tunable band gap materials but the question was that how does the bn decorate the carbon lattice and uh, what will be the config, different configurations at what concentration the structure will be stable and then what will the band gaps and all so we looked at all the possibilities and uh, and uh, what we found that if you have BB and NN bonds uh, uh, as in the figure E at the top, uh, that the structure uh, uh, won't be energetically favorable. But uh, if you have BC and NC formations at the interface, that the structure will be, uh, will be very stable to form. And uh, uh, we calculated the band gaps as well, and all different materials will be have, uh, were having different different band gaps actually. 
And uh, the other results were that if you have a bigger boron nitride or graph uh, boron nitride or graphene chunks, you have a uh, more stability in the structure. So this we published in, in a couple of journals actually in 2011-2010 with the Professor Sienna Rao group and Professor Umesh Wagmare. Uh, this is uh, once we uh, synthesized the material, we looked at the how can we uh, can we um, use these BCN seeds for the greenhouse gas adoptions. Uh, this was published in Chemsus Chem, Chem in 2011. And uh, the good thing about these BCN materials uh, experimentally was that they are having a more surface area compared to the uh, graphenes. So more surface area means you can have a more reduction of gases. And these are the computational results where we looked at a different uh, kind of uh, configurations that one can expect uh, uh, while doing the uh, experiments. And these are the lattice energy, lattice constants uh, that we did the calculations. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is the electronic DOS figure showing that uh, few are uh, insulators while few are metallic in the system. Then uh, this is the one, uh, I'm showing you only one slide. What we did, we tried to absorb CO2 and finally uh, after placing uh, at 44 weight percentage, uh, there was no CO2 was getting absorbed on the uh, BCN seats. And the similar calculations were did uh, to support uh, the experiments uh, to figure it out uh, how much will be the maximum uptake of the methane gas on these BCN materials and the 22.5 weight percentage was the optimum weight percentage for CS4 adsorption on BCN seeds. This was highlighted as one of the hottest article in chem in 2011 actually. One of the area in which our group is actively working is in the collaboration with the University of Kiel at the Germany. And this was highlighted at the cover page of advanced functional materials. So uh, gas sensors uh, are everywhere. And that the challenge is the high sensitivity and uh, selectivity actually. Uh, this, is, um, our, this was our work on uh, the doped zinc oxide tetrapods. And uh, uh, we have been working on so many different uh, metal oxides uh, by uh, doping with the other materials and looking at the uh, gases or uh, the selective gas sensors. And and as a computational, what we have, what we look, we uh, uh, we look at the how uh, your dopant is going to um, interact with the um, uh, our um, metal oxides uh, tetra tetrapods uh, uh, particles. And uh, once it comes, with a, uh, if we can uh, predict that. A particular molecule is capable of changing the resistance of the, your system, it means that you, that metal is capable of sensing. Uh, Gladys joined our group as a C. V. Raman fellow in 2017 at UPES, uh, and um, we worked with the, university, uh, with the Technical University of Kenya. And in collaboration, we uh, recently published a work on uh, uh, dimetal chalcogenides, so half in sulfide materials, and we proposed these materials as one of the uh, better electrode material where we looked at the alkali ions uh, uh, migrations over the these uh, layered structure where we looked at the one there was a one graphene seed and one half in sulfide seed over that. Uh, 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 there's another work with the uh, University of Ghana where this guy uh, when worked on the optoelectronics materials and this is one of the beautiful materials where we propose the new materials. Uh, uh, gallium nitride with the materials uh, uh, people are working on, what we try to do, we try to mix it with the graphene and boron nitrides. And uh, what we found that uh, uh, you, these materials are even more stable. Uh, we are working on the uh, other optoelectronics uh, applications as well. This is uh, this is the work with the collaboration with the Dr. Mishra, sir. Sir, your lecture is very nice and very useful, but we have the limit of time. Please bind up in five minutes, sir. Yes, yeah, sure, 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 sure. By five, I will be ending. So uh, this is uh, in collaboration with the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, where our computational uh, calculations uh, predict that how the local structure of your NBOF5 and a similar kind of uh, materials can play a crucial role in determining the photo uh, photocatalytic activity. 
recently uh, at UPES uh, in house work, uh, we worked on the TiO2 and the silver nanoparticles. And uh, uh, what we found that if you have a uh, interaction of TiO2 with the small uh, AG clusters, uh, you can you know shift the uh, uh, these lesions shift that adsorption spectra from UV to visible range. We are working on the uh, drug delivery systems as well, uh, where we have targeted recently lipojones. And uh, this we published in 2019, where we looked at the uh, the lipids drugs interaction and uh, how these uh, where it's going to bind in our system. Where lipojones you, you can you know synthesize in the laboratory as well, and we have we have in our body as well. So this is uh, um, uh, regarding the physical, physical chemical properties of uh, how the drug will interact in our uh, uh, biological lipids. One of the areas in which we are working is the water purification and this was uh, on the graphene oxides. Why graphene oxide? Because they have large surface area, tunable chemical properties. And objective was that how much pesticides it can remove uh, from the water. So we published with Professor T. Pradeep at, uh, in collaboration with the Professor T. Pradeep at uh, IIT Madras, who is a well-known Padam uh, Siyawaldi for the water research. And we did the simulations by looking at the different stacking sequence. What we found that if you have ternary complex, they are much more stable. And then we uh, uh, tried to find out how much the uptake of pesticide could be and what will be the nature. Uh, this uh, is last year we collaborated with the University of Cambridge and uh, this was hosted at uh, uh, this equipment was given by Water Scope and this department University of Cambridge and our group is working on the simulations of how bacteria can be removed from these uh, synthesized materials. So we are here on the left side of this figure actually where we have a models we have a tools but uh, we need to introduce these techniques in our uh, master's and bachelor's degree courses. We need to have better computational resources and the close integration where we can, you know, we can expect that uh, uh, we have a button, button, uh, push button kind of technology where you, you have you are put, um, pressing the button and you're getting the properties of desired properties. Thank you from my side. And again, thank you, the Professor Pandey and Dr. Thank you, Dr. A.K. sir. Thank you for delivering a lecture starting from very basic to have its application in environment, material, and medical. So thank you for your nice lecture. Really, it's very useful and versatile for all the challenging problems of the society. So uh, may the audience ask the question if you, you have, although we are running out of time, even then, if anybody have any uh, query, then they can ask the question. I think uh, nobody is there to ask the question and uh, uh, sir has shared his email and all the detail. If anybody have any query, then they can ask their questions and their uh, discussions. They can share their discussion with Dr. Mishra, sir. So thank you, sir, very much for delivering such a nice lecture uh, to benefit our audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now our next speaker is... Uh, uh, Dr. Jay Singh from Guru Bhasi Das University, Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh. Uh, he is going to deliver the invited talk 12 in the International Conference on Futuristic Material on the topic of synthesis and characterization of zinc oxide and metal dichalcogenide nanomaterials. Sir, I welcome you to have your discussion and your lecture uh, to Bless our audience to give uh, the interaction and uh, uh, this flavor of this particular uh, most recent talk uh, to our audience as well as to the participants. Thank you, sir. You are most welcome, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Pandeji. Uh, uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my slide audible. is. Uh, you can see my slide. Yes, you are uh, slide it uh, uh, visible yes, here sir. and you are audible also. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, very good evening, all of you. Uh, first, thanks to all uh, organizers to organize this uh, wonderful conference. Hello. 
yes sir yes sir you are audible, audible. Okay, okay thank you thank you thank you thank you very much uh, please, please go to full screen mode okay okay uh, click right. on the slide show yeah 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 okay now now you can see yes sir yes, it's it's okay sir okay thank you uh, just uh, a special thank to mr uh, amrish kumar sivasto uh, who is in my team meet for the present my research work uh, today i will discuss about two very important uh, materials Uh, that is for uh, future devices uh, these uh, materials are uh, are uh, very well connected uh, uh, theme of the, your conference uh, first uh, i would like to discuss about the metal dye checkup diet and second i will discuss about the another important material that is the zinc oxide uh, basically i will not discuss in detail this is due to very limited time uh, before they start my scientific talk i want to acknowledge uh, to respect and my teachers and my phd mentor and uh, i did my work in several in city uh, where i have uh, learned many things uh, i am very happy to share with you i am i am alumnus of the, this uh, did you go for in city i did my master in 2000 2000 uh, respected my teacher is already present uh, only, two, only right now only two teachers uh, sugreen otiwari sir and also rastogi sir uh, other are new and after the my leave they have joined there uh, before this uh, okay uh, then this uh, these are my collaborative university uh, that uh, there we have uh, did a lot of, a lot of thing Uh, these are my publication. Uh, nearly, I have published ninety-eight paper in different different uh, journals, uh, and uh, we have uh, published uh, nearly eleven book chapters. And uh, uh, already, we have uh, uh, um, submitted one patent. And uh, recently, um, the last week, uh, we have uh, got one uh, uh, big projects in uh, DST, ne uh, uh, nearly fifty uh, lakh. Uh, basically, I am sitting in a rem very remote area. that is not very uh, that is not very well connected to uh, all india port okay <laughs> this uh, uh, view of this uh, i want to discuss about the uh, uh, two materials as you know very well uh, the first uh, two dimensional zinc uh, uh, two dimensional graphene material were discovered in 2004 after the discovery of this graphene several two dimensional materials has been synthesized by various methods uh, today morning professor anjana kumar gupta uh, from itk he is discuss about the graphene and uh, also uh, before my talk uh, dr misra has also discuss about many things about the two dimensional graphene and maxane and also he discuss uh, uh, graphene oxide and several things they have discuss uh, about in talk uh, basically i am not going to discuss several things i will going to discuss very limited thing Uh, basically uh, i will discuss about the especially two dimensional uh, diatomic materials uh, basically after the discovery of graphene uh, that these uh, materials have gained the worldwide attention in the uh, in the in the for the possible various application in the transition related devices basically this is a wonderful materials that could transform the material science world uh, basically uh, that uh, team uh, uh, tran uh, transition uh, this that materials have a certain advantage over the this uh, silicon uh, silicon uh, material basically especially in a silicon that is uh, three dimensional but uh, this mos2 and dietic material is two dimensional and one of the important thing uh, with the help of this uh, dietic dye materials uh, uh, we can uh, uh, we can grow our devices we can develop our devices in a uh, less than three times uh, uh, thinner than the this uh, silicon Uh, uh in a basically in a silicon if you make silicon device uh, nearly 2 uh, nanometer is a, is a good for uh, for especially for a mos2 uh, 0.65 nanometer is enough for for any any devices for and uh, due to this uh, 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 thickness decreasing that is the uh, good for the uh, uh, for further uh, devices and other thing uh, one more important thing in this basically in a mos2 that we can tune the uh, our band gap and uh, that is one of the important things uh, mos2 this is a indirect band gap after that uh, we can change the uh, thickness after the changing the thickness then band gap will going to increase uh, nearly 1.8 uh, eb uh, that is uh, nearly to uh, and also in the uh, 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 direct uh, uh, band gap 
and uh, uh, the uh, nearly 40 types different type of dichromonides material exists in the nature they have the, uh, the all solid state property uh, uh, that are existing in the semiconductor and as well as the insulator and and metallic behavior they have uh, basically i will discuss only mos2 i'm not going to discuss all of the this uh, uh, dichromonides uh, materials uh, basically <laughs> uh, this, uh, uh, as we know, the uh, two dimensional materials have that this is uh, one of the thinnest materials and also having the highest mobility. Uh, graphene is a nearly 10 to power 5 centimeter uh, uh, per, per volt per, per second. Uh, very good mobility, but uh, as well as this uh, two dimensional material is also having the very good mobility uh, is the compare than uh, your uh, silk and other material. This is the first uh, uh, publication that is published by the same group who was discovered the uh, graphene. Uh, but that time uh, they got very uh, very low mobility. Mobility is only three centimeters square uh, uh, bolt per, per second. But uh, nowadays people are uh, uh, developed the several devices. The mobility is nearly 1000 centimeter uh, per bolt per second. Uh, basically, why I am interesting in uh, this uh, MOS2 materials, I want to discuss. Basically, this is the uh, very uh, most important materials uh, in a uh, earlier age. MOS2 is, uh, is used as a solid lubricant, uh, very earlier age. Uh, after the discovery of the two dimensional, two dimension uh, uh, behavior, that material is very useful for the field emitter, transistor, and uh, memory biosensor and uh, supercapacitor also, as like the maxine and, and uh, the graphene. Uh, basically, uh, we did, uh, we have uh, synthesized our uh, this MOS2, especially for the nano -tines. I'm not going to discuss about nanotines, but I will discuss only the synthesis part. Uh, that material is the basically uh, uh, important thing is for the for the uh, nanotines. This is the absence of the dangling board, as well as the, this is the thermal stability is very high uh, compared to any silicon and, and other uh, materials. And mobility is is uh, nearly 200 to 1000. Uh, different different people are synthesized by different different method. They they have reported the mobility range is different different. And most important thing is this uh, materials. That material is good for the uh, fed devices. This is one of the important property in in the transistor if you want to grow, if you want to uh, develop some FET, that is the, for this, that is the on of ratio is the higher. If the, basically that is the missing in a, in a graphene, due to that graphene is not good for the FET devices. Uh, mobility is high in graphene, but uh, due to on of ratio is uh, there is not, due to, due to only, that is the semiconductor behavior. The, uh, the semiconductor behavior is existing in this MOS2 to this, uh, we are getting the very good on off ratio in these materials. Uh, basically, in uh, this uh, material, is the four types of uh, polytypes of crystalline structures. Uh, basically, I am testing only the uh, uh, this is the special type of hexagonal space uh, group uh, PFC MC types of uh, this structures. Uh, this is the uh, we can see here the, the three dimensional view of the this MOS2 MOS2 system. Uh, uh, here you can see here that they are the stacking with the uh, with the different different layer due to uh, due to the this uh, behavior this we can the uh, we can uh, use we can uh, synthesize as like uh, graphene this is uh, uh, with with help of micro mechanical cleavage basically uh, the with the uh, sulfur sulfur here is alo is a sulfur this is sulfur sulfur interact with the very weak van der Waal forces and uh, YMO, uh, and yamo and sulfur they were interact with the uh, with the covalent bonding uh, with a weak van der Waal that with very easily we can ex exploit it and that we can uh, we can uh, deposit it on the as well as our uh, and uh, uh, that is the your substrate uh, that after that we can use for the different different devices and different different uh, measurement uh, i want to discuss about the uh, uh, two types uh, we have used the here two types of synthesis methods first i will discuss about the uh, chemical vapor division second i will uh, discuss about the, this uh, uh, this is the sputtering methods uh, in a, in, a, uh, in a both methods we are using the moo3 as a source materials as well as the, our sulfur is a, as a as a under uh, agent uh, and under uh, our 
uh, self, uh, that is the, called the sulfurization of the this. The, in this system, so basically, uh, uh, we have uh, used uh, uh, two zone for uh, made by self. That is uh, only assembled uh, in our lab. Uh, the, in this, uh, we are using. Uh, nearly basically sulfur melting point is very low uh, and that uh, up, uh, the, uh, that Dr. Amrish ji, have you any problem? Hello. Hello. Dr. Dr. Amrish ji. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, 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 sir. Please uh, share your screen. Some technical problem was there. That's why we were disconnected. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Uh, Uh, now, Pande sir, you can see my screen. Uh, Hello. Still, we are unable to see your screen. Sir, please share your screen. Uh, one minute. Sir. One minute. Sir. Okay, okay. Sir. Now. Dr. Amrish Kumar Shivastu ji. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Uh -huh. Is there any problem? I think the problem is from presenter side, speaker side. So I think I would request Dr. Jay Singh, sir, to conclude orally within two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Dr. Jay Singh, sir, if, if possible, please uh, conclude uh, yeah, yeah. orally within three minutes. Four yeah, minutes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one minute, sir. Okay, sir. Just, uh, sir, you can. Spante, sir, you can see my say. No, sir. No, no sir. sir can't. Hello. No, sir. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's okay. I think uh, that is ended all on my side. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, uh, this is the problem. Uh, EMOS2, that is not very easy to synthesize very, in a good manner, uh, in a control uh, thickness. Uh, for this, we have uh, sputtered our sample at different, different times. And then uh, we have self fried our system and a different amount. Then we got the uh, monolayer, and uh, this is the bilayer, trilayer, and uh, different. Uh, that's very good. Techniques for the uh, measuring the, this the thickness. Uh, only Raman is a very uh, wonderful techniques, and also atomic force microscopy. Uh, basically, we have used the both techniques uh, with the help of. Then we have concluded that our system, uh, our our artery, uh, uh, layer by layer, tri layers. That is only uh, help up that uh, 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 with techniques. Uh, uh, we, after that, we have uh, 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 yeah, and uh, that we got the nearly uh, 500 centimeter uh, mold is with fire. 
per volt per centimeter. Uh, that is a uh, good material. Since sir, uh, your screen is visible now, but uh, uh, try to have this uh, presented mode. Uh, sir, your screen is visible now. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Please show it in okay. slide show mode. Uh, and what am I allowed? Uh, okay, so okay, sir. Okay, sir. Conclude and uh, please can... conclude within five minutes, within three minutes. Okay, okay. And it's that and really that is very important in the different uh, uh, in the, uh, nowadays in one point months uh, for years different different uh, uh, industry. Uh, so why I'm outside uh, using? The uh, have up uh, uh, different factors. We have since is uh, wonderful uh, and uh, by the known as uh, one is simple fact uh, it blow off oxygen, blow off organ, cup, zinc powder. That is one of the very simple things uh, with the help of uh, this. Uh, we can see here uh, that. That uh, structures, uh, obviously, our aim, obviously, our main aim was why we have grown this type of different type of nanostructures uh, uh, without using, basically, uh, in any practice and plan without using any, uh, any substrate. Uh, uh, this uh, point of view, this is the uh, two most important work I want to discuss. See, uh, and that we have grown uh, without this. Uh, uh, this is our all, all. Sir, I think there is some problem in your voice also. So may I request you to uh, maybe kindly, you enter. kindly show your conclusion slide, final slide, please, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, this uh, we have grown the, all these uh, materials uh, using any cats, and also we have grown the airline and different uh, This is my user. Uh, how much uh, due to the network and share with my uh, view and uh, sorry for this. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you, Bye. Professor Jai Singh, sir. Uh, okay. Really, your work is very good, but uh, initially you already told us oh, that okay. you, are, you are in remote area. That's why some in, an internet problem is there. That's why yeah. we couldn't couldn't uh, uh, see and couldn't uh, heard the uh, some important aspect of your research work. But uh, anyhow, thank you very much, yeah. sir, for your nice work, which you have presented uh, among the audience. And uh, okay. you have given the very good insight for the use of this uh, chalcogenite semiconducting materials uh, at the nano level. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, for my request to all students, uh, they can contact with me. Basically, uh, uh, basically, I have some good facility here. Uh, basically, uh, basically, alumnus of the, this uh, uh, Gorakhpur Institute. So really, uh, uh, I will have said I will help the, all the student if they will contact with me. Really, it's very good, and uh, uh, it is more important uh, that uh, our student will interact to. Uh, your facilities and they will get the more insight as well as the exposure of the facilities which we are dealing with. Uh, Professor Sugriyut Tripathi Tiwari said we also there. Perhaps he is uh, here only to bless you as a teacher yeah. when you were studying here in this university. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Uh, obviously, uh, with uh, my blessing, it's my teacher. Obviously, uh, I did a very good uh, research, and as well as the, I got the very good projects. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as I told you, uh, now I have a, uh, two projects. Uh, one is oh, yes, uh, from the uh, I have two projects. 
and uh, uh, that i am doing um, as as the <laughs> video student i am doing very good uh, yes dr jaising sir want to say something tiwari sir hello yes yeah, sir sir dr jaising uh, good sir dher sari meri badhaiyan आपको वहां से शिफ्ट करने के थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू मेनी मेनी कांग्रेचुलेशन पहली बार कहा कि आप मुझे थैंक यू सर और आपने मैं बहुत अच्छा इंटरेक्शन करना चाहूंगा सर हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल और आपने बहुत अच्छा काम तो रिसर्च के समय से ही बहुत अच्छा काम कर रहे थे आप और आपने उसको कंटिन्यू किया और मेरी शुभकामना है आने वाले समय में आप लोग एक हम लोगों के आधार स्तंभ होंगे because you have to candle the light of this hum um, log aapke piche piche hain sir ji ji meri dher sari shubh kamnaye hain aur aur acha kaam kariye aur aage badhiye thank you sir okay thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you thank you we have the possibility of time that's why we are uh, moving towards the next speaker of this yeah. session and uh, perhaps this is the last uh, okay sir. Uh, invited talk of this uh, technical session four of this international conference on futuristic material and uh, in this uh, session and the invited talk will be delivered by the professor ml barma sir who is from ssg ssc uh bhilani so i request professor ml barma sir uh, to share his screen and start his uh, uh, presentation to bless our candidates to bless our uh, audience who are participating in this national international conference sir please thank you all sir <clears throat> mere screen dikh raha hai am i audible what's about my voice and uh, uh, Yes, sir. My screen is okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please start slide show. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Should I start now? Yes, sir. Sure. Just a bit. so first of all thank you the organizer for uh, joining me in this uh, international conference and uh, <clears throat> so i would like to thank my guide uh, dr rakesh chandra agrawal and uh, uh, professor ravi pande from michigan tech university and that uh, rodrigo the collaborator of my research work uh, for their help blessings and uh, encouragement in my research work i also like to thank my each and every candidates of my research group arti verma nirbhay kesing bk shora and homendra shahu rachna singh uma and durga banchur and other students who are directly and indirectly connected with me and uh, taking my help as well as the uh, guidance and uh, taking part in some discussion sessions also because teaching research these are a two way process when we do something we teach something we learn also so i also enjoy to uh, learn from my students so actually i am actively involved in uh, both theoretical as well as experimental research work so these are my students uh, involved in uh, first principle based study these are the dft based study and uh, these are theoretical studies and uh, some students uh, two students have completed their phd in uh, mathematical modeling and uh, some experimental work uh, has also in uh, uh, under uh, uh, my guidance and uh, these are my experimental students basically from uh, during my phd work i was uh, a purely experimental uh, researcher and student 
and after uh, completion of my phd i have started mathematical modeling and uh, uh, that uh, dft based study and uh, continuously uh, continuously from uh, uh, 1912 my dft based studies are uh, under progress this is uh, my institution i am from sri sankrachar technical campus bilai this is uh, now autonomous uh, institution affiliated with uh, uh, csvq from uh, chatisgarh swami technical uh, vivekananda technical universities this is nec a grade a institution as well as each and every branch of this institution is nba accredited i belong to vilai this is a special part of chatisgarh and uh, my institution is uh, near about uh, durga so it is easily approachable from durga railway station and uh, uh, that uh, highway then <coughs> so outlines of my research i will first talk about some polymers and uh, then the methodology used and uh, results actually time is uh, very short so uh, many things cannot be we have to um, i have to say skip some things so i will include some results from this paper which is published in polymer bulletin the interaction of po and uh, with uh, lithium and uh, lithium iodide and sodium iodide and uh, this is purely density functional based approach and then i will also include some part of this po silver iodide polymer system and uh, and uh, then the main focus will be on the mechanical strength of solid polymer electrolytes and uh, example i will include uh, will is uh, po5 and uh, with uh, this lithium chloride uh, percolate salt so first of all everyone knows about polymers because we have so many uh, devices related to polymers available in market as well as uh, they are in our daily life use generally in school levels uh, in our graduation levels students uh, studies about polymers these are classified into uh, three that uh, that uh, insulating polymers electronic conducting polymers and uh, ionic conducting polymers but uh, in my research or in this work i will uh, talk about that polymer which is actually conducting polymers and uh, this is uh, ionic conducting polymers which is uh, used as electrolytes in uh, different electrochemical devices so conducting polymer salts we are firstly described in year 1970 and this is uh, now become uh, very important for their potential applications in solid state electrochemical devices especially in batteries sensors fuel cells supercapacitor etc out of all these uh, conducting polymer electrolyte uh, conducting polymers that poa that polyethylene oxide this best solid polymer electrolytes were studied extensively in recent years as an electrolyte because of its fast and conducting and uh, good compatibility processing into thin films and a leak nature a leak proof uh, nature so this is a polymer which is abundant in use it's a high crystalline uh, crystalline uh, polymer so uh, because of its its crystallinity initially it's a uh, Uh, its uh, ionic conductivity is very very limited it's very less that is in the order of 10 to the minus 9 10 to the minus 10 and when we reduce it, its crystallinity experimentally then uh, the polymer chain improves uh, uh, when we reduce it, its crystallinity its conductivity enhanced and uh, to reduce this crystallinity we use uh, some uh, we add some salts or we uh, use some inert materials and uh, Uh, increase its uh, conductivity its mechanical stability mobility um, also uh, increased after adding some salts and uh, uh, inert uh, nanomaterials <coughs> so for most of polymer salt complex cations should bind to the polymers actually in experimental side what uh, we did what we do in this uh, particular material that polymer based material we prepare materials just like uh, uh, other experiment list and uh, we add some inert materials and salt materials and uh, uh, made a composite uh, electrolyte system and uh, we study its uh, uh, electrical properties by using lcr meters etc and then we discuss about its uh, reason the reason behind the conductivity enhancement and uh, we give uh, some reason that uh, the salt is interacted with uh, oxygens of that po and uh, uh, that uh, some uh, Uh, vacant vacancies created or um, chain is uh, uh, mobilized uh, after adding this uh, salts and uh, inert materials and uh, this uh, these are the um, possible uh, reasons uh, uh, we indicate um, we saw uh, 
to enhance the, the conducting conductivity of this polymer. This ionic conductivity of uh, this polymer electrolyte it is uh, uh, theoretically explained uh, by Levy's acid-base interaction. And this uh, some theoretical paper this has been mentioned. And when in the DFT-based study in our laboratory, what we do actually whatever um, experimentalist or our experimental results are showing and uh, some probable regions are um, indicating to to enhancement of that uh, conducting polymer we just uh, try to uh, uh, re-study all those properties and uh, uh, try to give uh, uh, the details what is happening actually inside that uh, polymer uh, materials we check so methodology methodology used so all calculations we use in our laboratory that is uh, density functional based theory and uh, this uh, this gft which is implemented in sista and uh, we use that sister as a tool for our study and uh, that generalized gradient approximation this gg is used as an exchange correlation function and one norm norm conserving pseudo potential which is uh, we take from uh, that uh, uh, sister site and we use that and then system is relaxed until the force in all components of each atoms are smaller than 0 0.001 electron volt uh, per angstrom the details of uh, that uh, um, our dft procedure uh, can be uh, seen from uh, my YouTube channel that is uh, Sista and Hanson Tutorials on Molecular Modeling. This channel is actually <coughs> designed for beginner and uh, who actually learn to uh, study DFT. And uh, this uh, Sista is a very wonderful tool because uh, it uh, uses uh, very less computational time and uh, one can uh, use this Sista by their own laptop with a modern configuration. So it is easy to learn, uh, easy to handle. And uh, one can study the properties of crystalline, non-crystalline, and now um, the polymeric materials as uh, I have uh, used by using this. And uh, if anyone interested, they can start from this uh, um, uh, YouTube channel and uh, learn a sister. And I am I with my team is always ready to help uh, uh, such a um, learner. And uh, I I will be very happy if anyone contact me and. Uh, uh, regarding to learn this because I have organized uh, several uh, uh, schools and uh, uh, workshop uh, related to this uh, DFT based studies and recently I have completed one faculty development program and uh, the videos of that lab works as well as uh, uh, theoretical um, and experimental papers have also been uploaded in this uh, uh, YouTube channel. So now let uh, me discuss uh, about uh, uh, the result uh, from uh, this uh, tool studied by my team. So few outcomes. This is uh, PO5, uh, PO5, uh, the polymer chain, which uh, is optimized by using system. Why I'm taking this PO5? Some of uh, uh, theoretical paper I have uh, uh, just uh, get the result that if uh, uh, the salt and uh, that uh, oxygen, number of oxygen ratio of that polymer chain is, uh, if it is uh, about one ratio five, then the result is uh, good enough. So actually, in my laboratory, um, there is a limitation of computational uh, power initially. So I just uh, use that uh, minimum numbers of uh, uh, that uh, atoms uh, for the uh, um, for the study. So PO5 chain is uh, optimized by using that sister techniques. And then we add silver iodide here and study that uh, uh, its uh, interaction with this polymer chain. Then we also optimized two chain Two chain of uh, PO5, so this is now uh, represented as PO10, and uh, we add two silver iodide uh, uh, with this uh, two chains to uh, observe uh, the effect of uh, adding polymers and uh, with increased numbers of uh, polymer chains and salts. And also we add four numbers of uh, silver iodide uh, molecules here and uh, observe the effect. So what uh, we uh, observe is when we increase uh, the numbers of the silver iodide, uh, the bond length, uh, there is a change in the bond length of AgO. Ag means that uh, Ag positive ions with this oxygen of that uh, polymer chain, as well as uh, uh, some uh, uh, remarkable effect in uh, silver iodide bond length is also observed. So, this is uh, the charge density distribution. One uh, good thing, one can say one uh, very, very good thing about this uh, molecular modeling uh, type of studies that we can directly observe the effect of interaction of uh, uh, 
uh, ions interaction of that particular atom with uh, any another atoms and also we can um, uh, observe that uh, the distribution of electrons around any particular atoms so here this is the charge density distribution and density functional theory is actually based on the study of electronic uh, distribution uh, around any atom so here uh, that uh, the scale is uh, mentioned here that the maximum uh, charge that is uh, shown by this uh, color and which is uh, near about uh, that oxygen atoms and by observing this uh, charge density plot we predict that the bond between two atoms are ionic partially ionic or covalent bonds so so it is uh, just a silver uh, that with that oxygen this is ionic bond and uh, with that carbon this is a uh, uh, covalent bond now also we can see the effect of orbitals uh, with uh, the effect of orbitals in uh, this this study so uh, this is uh, that uh, projected density of state plot of uh, that uh, particular system and here uh, this is the homo and this is lomo and this gap this is uh, this gap is known as forbidden energy gap which is the band gap so when we add that numbers of uh, salts that uh, then this uh, energy gap forbidden energy gap or energy for uh, it is uh, uh, decreasing and becomes uh, uh, zero when we further add and uh, we also trying to study that uh, when we enhance that uh, numbers of uh, much more numbers of um, salt then the effect is uh, uh, that forbidden energy it is almost zero uh, but uh, uh, in order to calculate that conductivity we need uh, direct ionic conductivity need to study that molecular dynamic simulation so that is a separate study which is not uh, uh, presented here and then the conclusion uh, observations by increasing the numbers of silver ionized molecules the forbidden energy decreasing gradually and finally becomes zero the electrons donating nature of silver atom is gradually increasing and hence the concentration of cations is gradually increased and due to this hsab principle this is a hard soft acid based principle this actually based on the size of ions and interaction between that anions and cations the mobility will also be increased and finally the ionic conductivity of polymer salt is increased now the second uh, system where the same uh, po5 we use that lithium iodide sodium uh, uh, sodium iodide and uh, study the same and uh, get the similar uh, result and we also enhance that numbers of silver and uh, uh, numbers of sodium and lithium ions uh, uh, in two uh, pairs of uh, that uh, po5 chains and get good result and this is uh, that uh, charge density plot this is uh, it's a projected density of plot and here also we are observing that uh, its band gap is uh, decreasing after adding uh, that uh, silver uh, that uh, salt uh, sodium and lithium salt so this is uh, that uh, for the second system and this is that result so that fermi energy level is mentioned here and forbidden energy gap this is uh, in the decreasing order and binding energy we have also calculated that binding energy by using Uh, this formula so the binding energy can be calculated as uh, uh, from its equilibrium configuration that in equilibrium configuration means this is that optimized system uh, having the lowest uh, amount of energy so we can calculate that binding energy by use this eb is equal to e means the total energy of po po salt minus uh, pure energy of that po and uh, that energy of salt and uh, also we have calculated that bond breaking energy uh, Uh, this is uh, by using this formula so this is the beauty of uh, that uh, molecular modeling or that dft based study we can play with each and every atoms of the system so what we uh, perform in our study we just uh, pick uh, one atom and uh, just stretch uh, that uh, pull up from that its equilibrium uh, equilibrium position up to when it is uh, already uh, break uh, break so uh, that uh, that energy when just uh, that system is uh, broken uh, that energy is known as uh, that uh, that point is known as breaking point and uh, this energy is calculated by using this formula so that mechanical stability or the mechanical uh, strength of that polymer is uh, very important uh, because uh, because uh, 
uh, for device application uh, not only that electrical and electronic properties of uh, such uh, systems are required but also its mechanical stability is important mechanical strength is important so this study is uh, important in this context so now this is that third system published in the avnix that uh, when we add this lithium uh, lithium chloride uh, and this uh, particular electrolyte is used in lithium ion conducting batteries and here we just stretch that uh, particular system along x axis y axis and z axis and observe uh, the strength of this uh, polymer system and uh, this is that result so along z axis means along the length length of uh, um, its uh, uh, length of polymer chain its uh, energy is uh, uh, the bond breaking energy is minimum and uh, so what's about uh, now let us see we also have uh, observed the effect of uh, plasticizers this plasticizer is uh, generally used by experimentalist uh, to in enhance that ionic conductivity of uh, uh, this uh, polymer electrolyte system so glycol plasticizer is very very famous plasticizer and uh, we also study uh, the same by using this dft so uh, what we do uh, do in this uh, study we just optimize that uh, po initially and that that plasticizer peg and then add this uh, salt and uh, convert that uh, particular system in uh, po5 peg6 and uh, sodium uh, sodium iodide is added here so and then uh, similar parallel studies whatever we have done uh, earlier for uh, um, uh, other um, salt system and pure pu based system is uh, performed uh, in this also that homolumo plots uh, are um, calculated and then band gap the change in band gap after adding this plasticizer is observed so when we add plasticizer its uh, energy band gap is uh, decreased and uh, when we further add its uh, salt it's uh, uh, further decreased now this is uh, the projected density of uh, uh, system that po po silver sodium iodide and uh, after adding this uh, plasticizer and then uh, this is that uh, charge density plot and uh, further uh, we calculated uh, its uh, mechanical strength before and after adding this uh, plasticizer so what we observe after adding this uh, plasticizer the breaking that bond breaking energy it decreases so that uh, system is unstable and because of unstability of the system extra volume is uh, created and uh, when uh, by using that uh, volume theory given for that uh, electrolyte system especially polymer electrolyte system when volume in uh, volume that system expanses uh, volume in between that uh, particular um, polymer chain it uh, it is increases uh, it is increased and uh, ions get uh, extra space to move and ionic conductivity increases so this is the theory uh, uh, given in uh, experimentalist as well as theoretical persons and uh, we have also confirmed the same by using uh, our this dft based study ki then that salt actually uh, expand the bad that bond length as well as the use of plasticizer creates uh, extra volume uh, for the uh, enhancement of uh, ionic conductivity so this is summary geometric geometric optimization indicates reduction in the crystalline nature of polymers and uh, uh, increment in the interchain separation creating free volume das and peters provides information about the formation of band and the uh, contribution made by different orbitals in the conduction and the valence band band gap shows insulating characteristic of materials initially which is uh, further uh, uh, decreases after adding that plasticizer as well as salts hydrogen bonding seen in charge density plot suggests that there is more amorphous domain in the complex so we create this amorphous do domain means uh, that crystallinity is uh, decreased and as in turn the ionic conductivity is uh, increased for this pg and po system bond breaking energy for different polymer system illustrate uh, weakening of co c bonds and this is good for Uh, enhancing that ionic conductivity the finding provide an avenue that the present polymer system this uh, popg so this is a potential candidate to be used in electrolyte for next generation energy storage technology and uh, uh, recently this is uh, in experimentally uh, this has already been observed uh, that it's a, it has a very good uh, ionic conductivity so i think thanking you all
Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions? Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, nice lecture. Uh, I request the audience, if you have any question, then please ask that question. Although mm -hmm. we are running out of time, even then I request the audience, if you have any question, then please. Yes, sir. There is a question in chat box. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Uh, is it possible to study charge carrier mobility with respect to crystallinity using DFT? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we can try. And actually, that uh, that charge carrier mobility or conductivity for, for this uh, uh, that uh, molecular dynamic simulation this is used that diffusion coefficients uh, etc. Uh, can be calculated by using that. Uh, uh, that uh, molecular dynamic simulation and uh, but uh, by using that dft we can uh, uh, we can calculate that interaction of uh, salt with uh, um, different part of that polymer chain and uh, accordingly we can uh, try to calculate that carrier mobility and especially that uh, electronic case it is possible but ionic case uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult so electronic case we can do okay thank you sir thank so, you any more question uh, uh, thank you, sir, for your nice lecture. Really, you deliver a good talk to our audience uh, for the DFT as well as its application, having the different examples, how adding the different value or different amount, how the band gap and all those things will be changed. So really, it was very informative. And uh, uh, outside, I uh, thanks very much to you uh, for inviting us and learner to have your YouTube channel for starting yes. this particular job. And uh, thank you very much for this one. Uh, with that this, is I also thanks big... to the... Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So let me thank uh, all the eminent speakers oh. in this session. Uh, Dr. Neera Shukla from NIT Patna, Dr. A.K. Mishra from EPS Dehradun, Dr. Jaya Singh from GGV Vilaspur and Professor ML Verma from SSTC Delhi. Thank you all. And uh, I also thank to our uh, um, chairman, Professor BK Pandey, sir, for conducting this session. So we will start uh, the next session within, uh, I think, 15 minutes. That will be today's last, uh, last technical session, technical session fifth. So I would request everyone to join after 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ekishwasto, sir, and head of department, Professor Tiwari, sir. sir, and all other organizers, and all the speakers. Thank you very much for giving me opportunity to share this particular session.